Chris McCarthy serves up a buffet of both national and South Coast topics from the week that was and the week ahead. Read his latest blogs on WBSM.com. Leave a comment on our Facebook page. Or join the show by calling 508-996-0500. Now, here's the host of Sunday Brunch, Chris McCarthy. And good afternoon. We've just passed noontime here on WBSM Radio, and I'm really... uh, I want to thank Jack Spillane for uh, for spending the hour with us and talking about uh, the Bianco raid on, on immigration. Um, now we have uh, Jay Gonzalez with us. Jay is going to join us here. Uh, he's running for governor. He's a Democrat, former member of Deval Patrick's administration, high-ranking member, actually, Secretary of Ad, Admin and Finance. That's the budget, the most important document that no one ever seems to care about. Uh, but we're going to talk to Jay about that and talk about his priorities and uh, what his thoughts are. So we'll go right to the phones here. Good morning, Jay. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Chris. So tell us, uh, tell the voters a little bit about yourself. Um, you know what what your past is and what what your what your future looks like. Sure. Well, um, uh, my my current future has me running for governor. That's what I'm doing right now. As you mentioned, I'm the only Democratic candidate in the race right now. And I'm running because I think we need to bring leadership back to the governor's office. Um, We've always been a leader here in Massachusetts. One of the things I love about this state is uh, we've always believed we can we can accomplish anything we put our minds to if we work for it. And we're facing a lot of big challenges across the state, a lot of challenges that are holding many families back. And uh, we're not doing enough to help them. And um, we also need a governor that's going to stand up for every single person in this state. So I want to bring that type of leadership to the state. And I, I as you mentioned, I was a, a, a cabinet secretary for Governor Deval Patrick overseeing the state budget uh, during the Great Recession. So unfortunately, unfortunate timing on my part to have that job during one of the worst fiscal crises the state had faced, but successfully managed uh, through that time. Uh, most recently, I, I uh, served as a CEO of a health insurance company that provided coverage to low-income people uh, in Massachusetts and New Hampshire. And uh, and I think that leadership experience in the public and private sector uh, hopefully will give people the confidence uh, that I'll be able to deliver on the ambitious agenda that I want to bring to the governor's office. Well, you certainly have the background for it, um, given that the problems or the or the issues i guess is all they're not necessarily problems they're just things that haven't yet been solved uh and it's always the budget what are your priorities for the budget you know that document or at least you knew it under deval patrick what are your priorities jay well i'll tell you one of my i have a number of priorities there are a lot of areas where we need to make meaningful progress that we're not even trying right now and i'll give you one example uh early education and child care this is something that um could make a huge difference for our kids and a huge difference for their parents if they could afford to send their kids to good quality child care. And right now, we're doing way too little in this area. It's not even on Governor Baker's agenda. Um, I know what a difference it can make because I used to be the, the chair of the State Board of Early Education and Care when I left uh, the Patrick administration. I have two wonderful daughters who benefited from great preschool programs. And my wife, uh, Cindy, who's from Chicopee, Massachusetts, was able to go to a a great Head Start preschool program that allowed her mom to go to work and support her family and gave Cindy a great solid start in school and in in life. And I think every single child in this state should get the same solid start that my wife, Cindy, and my daughters got. And if I'm governor, it's going to be uh, one of my top priorities to make sure every kid gets that uh, solid start and that their families have access to, to great child care. Uh, we're speaking to Jay Gonzalez, who's the declared candidate for governor here in Massachusetts. He's the only one declared right now. He's, we assume Charlie Baker's going to run. There are some other Democrats that are uh, you know, making hints that they might run. Jay, what's your website if people want more information? Thanks for asking, Chris. <laughs> uh, it is uh, www j for ma.com j a y number 4 ma.com and I, I encourage people to go check us out there's a lot of information about me and our candidacy and what we're trying to accomplish and uh, some recent media interviews maybe we'll put this up after uh, after we're through with the show oh we'd appreciate that jay the 
the question always is revenue. You again, yeah. you, you you know the budget. Um, what are your plans? You're going to have additional programs. You're going to do things. There's always a squeeze on the budget. What are your thoughts on additional revenue? I think we absolutely need additional revenue. I think we need a governor who's going to be honest about that. And uh, right now, um, honestly, I think uh, Governor Baker's been irresponsible in the way he's been managing the budget um, and has set us up for a real crisis when the economy turns. Uh, I know about, as you mentioned, managing the the budget, and I I did so during the Great Recession and did so successfully. And um, so I I think the truth is we need additional revenue, uh, not just to um, stabilize where we are and continue to fund the programs that, that people rely on today, but to make some of these new investments we need to make, like the one I just mentioned in early education and child care. So I'm supporting, um, I think the best way to get new revenue is the proposal that's going to be on the ballot in 2018, which would impose a new uh, surtax on people whose incomes are over a million dollars a year. Um, and that would generate about over $2 billion in new revenue to invest in some of these programs uh, that the rest of the rest of the state who hasn't done as well as people who are making over a million dollars a year uh, need some additional support. And um, and I think it's the fairest approach to new revenue. Uh, I think uh, it will. It's a progressive approach, uh, which right now our tax system is is not as progressive as it should be. And it's going to ask those who've been doing great and benefiting from the economic growth we've been seeing to pay a little bit more so that we can help out everybody else. Um, well, I think whether you agree with him or not agree with him, at least he's honest, folks. I uh, he told you uh, that, that he's he's got priorities and he, and he need money to pay for him. And I think that's in some cases refreshing. I don't know if it's politically the best thing to say, but it's um, – but, Jay, I, I do appreciate your honesty. One of the uh, things that I'd like to talk to you about is, uh, of course, across the state, and you, you've done health care in New Hampshire as well, there is the opioid crisis. Uh, yeah. People who have, have drug addictions are dying from it. Uh, their lives yeah. are devastated uh, and their families are devastated because of it. What are your thoughts uh, on that? What, what, what approach would you take? It's a crisis in our state. I'm, I'm very worried about it. Um, I think we've got, this is another area where we need real leadership to, to take it on. We've got to end the stigma associated with addiction uh, and provide the support that people need to get to get. Uh, help that they need and to get on the path to recovery. Um, right now, we're not doing enough, in my view. And, and I learned a lot about this issue when I was uh, CEO of my health insurance company, covered a lot of um, low-income people, a lot of people with behavioral health issues, including addiction. It was our biggest, the biggest problem among our membership. And so we put together um, a very progressive approach to trying new things to to help people suffering from addiction. And um, our our company ended up being recognized as uh, a leader on this issue. I want to bring that same level of attention and leadership and willingness to try new things um, and willingness to invest. As you were saying, Chris, it may may not be popular and people may not want to want to hear that we need new revenue. But the truth is we've got some big challenges and, and the opioid epidemic and addiction, it's, it's ruining people's lives. It's tearing families apart and it's hurting all of us. It's hurting our communities. And so we, we need to get serious about addressing these challenges. And, and it's, it would be a high priority for me and something I intend to work actively on, on doing a better job at. Uh, we're speaking with Jay Gonzalez, who's a Democrat declared candidate for governor here in Massachusetts. Uh, down here, of course, well, throughout Massachusetts and New England, the fishing industry is very important, but it's the yeah. really big deal here in the greater New Bedford area. What are your thoughts on that? And, and uh, let me just set this up. A lot of people down here feel that they don't get the representation that they need with the federal government, that that uh, some of our f- uh, federal delegation just isn't doing what we need. And I don't know that they even feel that Governor Baker is doing anything, although I, I, I'm i not sure on that. What are your thoughts on the fishing industry? Uh, and I'm not sure that you even have a position yet at this point. Yeah. Uh, so I know how important it is to New Bedford um, and and other communities on our, on our coast. And uh, it's something that I want to be as supportive as I can be on. Um, it's something, frankly, I want to learn more about from the people in New Bedford and, and, uh, members of the fishing industry. Um, I want to make sure I'm as smart as I can be on the challenges they're facing and the opportunities uh, that exist. And um, that 
that is my commitment to the fishing industry and everybody throughout this state that um, I'm, I'm not only going to be going all over this state, and I, I started this campaign early. As you mentioned, I'm the first one in uh, because I want to spend as much time as possible uh, not only going around the state and sharing with people my vision for the state, but also to hear from them. And the fishing industry is no exception to that. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting down to New Bedford and some of our other coastal communities and, and talking directly with people in the fishing industry and understanding uh, the challenges they're facing and how uh, our governor and our state can help. Well, I think that's a really a, a refreshing point of view. Uh, the people in this area would be happy to hear. And, and, and I, I can get with your people and get you some names of people. I think they would really give you some, some education on that because, as you point out, you can't know everything, um, but, but it's in, important to learn. Um, you, where is your stance on increasing the minimum wage here in Massachusetts? I think we need to do it, and I've, I've come out in support of uh, there's an effort right now to increase the minimum, minimum wage to $15 an hour. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, you know, there's a lot of talk about how our economy is doing great, but if you look, you peel the onion back a layer, you'll see that those at the top have been doing great and have really benefited uh, from, from the growth in, of the economy. But, uh, but most working families across this state are not, and and they haven't been benefiting from the growth, uh, and I think we need to, to take things to the next level to help make sure that people who are working hard and playing by the rules are getting a fair shake and uh, earning enough to support their families, and, and that's why uh, I'm supporting the $15 an hour minimum wage effort. I also support paid family leave uh, as another way to support working families across the state who unfortunately too often have to make a decision between uh, whether they keep their job or uh, leave to take care of their newborn child or a sick family member. And, you know, I think we can strike the right balance on that in uh, asking businesses uh, to support paid family leave while giving uh, working people the, re- the relief they need to be able to take care of their family and, and uh, not worry about their job. Um, I was very lucky I, when I uh, had my two daughters. I've got uh, two great daughters, Isabel and Abby. And um, I was working at a law firm at the time in Boston. And they offered uh, paid family leave, not only for women, but for um, fathers at that time, which I think they were probably one of the only employers or close to it who was who was offering such a benefit. And I was able to take uh, eight weeks of paid leave when each of my daughters was born, which was uh, extremely valuable uh, to my family, and um, and everybody in the state should should be able to do the same thing. I just want to ask you one more policy question. Then I want to shift to the, to sure. the nuts and bolts politics of winning this election. Um, the public schools uh, in Massachusetts. I happen to feel that uh, people in the suburbs, regardless of their political affiliation, generally really like their public schools. Yeah. Uh, I'm biased. My parents were teachers, and I went to the public schools. But I do think that that's true, uh, and that given the charter vote that we just had, charter school vote. Uh, but yeah. also, there are people who are really disappointed with the inner city schools. Now, I don't think you can put that all on teachers, but there is a, a balance here. Something has to be done for the inner city schools while preserving the suburban schools or even improving some of those. Give us your thoughts on public education. Sure. And let me say my mom was also a public school teacher uh, in Ohio where I grew up and a member of the teachers union. Um, so I have a great appreciation and love for, uh, for our public school teachers. And they do one of the most important jobs uh, around. Um, they're literally, uh, their, their influence literally impacts uh, our children's success in life. And, um, and we got to support them. So My view is it's among the most important things government does in providing everybody access to uh, a great education, and it's something we should never be sitting on our laurels uh, and satisfied with where we are. We should constantly be striving to uh, improve the the level and quality of education for our kids. Um, We've got, you know, we're one of the best ranked in the country based on our test scores. But as you pointed out, there there's still huge disparities between different communities. And uh, we have a lot of work to do still. And this is another area where I think we need real leadership. I've been disappointed with uh, the leadership in this area as well under Governor Baker, 
where it seemed like his whole education agenda was to try to was the ballot question to allow uh, more charter schools in uh, our inner cities. Um, and, and I didn't like it because it was divisive. Uh, it seemed like the agenda was around trying to create a separate system for a few kids that would have left many, many of our other kids uh, in the rest of our public schools um, with no attention being paid to how we, uh, how we improve the quality of those schools. I think we need to be working with urgency to help every single child get the best education they need. That needs to be our focus. And teachers are the biggest element to being able to deliver on that. They are, they are the ones who have the biggest influence on the quality of education. So we need to do everything we can to support our teachers and to support our schools so that we can deliver that education to every single child in the state. We're speaking to Jay Gonzalez, who's a candidate for governor here in Massachusetts, and quite frankly, the, the leading candidate right now in the race. You're, because he's the only guy. It helps to race. be the only one. Right. Yeah. If you can keep it that way, Jay, it, it, it's yeah. all sunshine. <clears throat> but getting to the the nuts and bolts, this yeah. policy is fantastic. I, I, I love it. But at the end of the day, you got to win the election to, 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 yeah. make, to implement anything. What's your plan? Uh, talk about you know what sort of resources you have. I know you've raised some money. Uh, talk about who, who's uh, helping you uh, and what your plan is to get better known in the state. Yeah. So I've got a great team uh, helping me, um, and uh, we, we've launched our campaign just a, a little over a month ago. And already I've been pretty much all over the state. Uh, uh, I'm coming to New Bedford soon. I haven't been to New Bedford yet, but I've been in many other parts of the state in just a month. And I've been meeting with lots of uh, local folks, uh, going to house parties and uh, Democratic town committee meetings and caucuses. And, um, and, I, and I started my campaign early, as I mentioned, because I want to get out and meet with as many people as possible face-to-face and build a real strong grassroots campaign. Uh, I really believe that that's the right way for a candidate to uh, run for office, and it's something I'm investing a lot of time and effort in doing. Um, We've had a really good month. Uh, I've met a lot of people. As you mentioned, we've raised some money. Uh, We just announced that we raised over $100,000 in our first month, which I think demonstrates the level of enthusiasm and support uh, for this campaign. And I'm, I'm uh, offering a very different vision of uh, leadership from what we have right now. And it's uh, leadership to, to uh, propose an ambitious agenda to move us forward on a lot of these issues we were talking about. It's also about standing up for people. And Chris, it sounded like maybe on, on the, the preceding show, there was a segment about the raid in, um, in New Bedford uh, 10 years ago uh, from, by federal immigration officials at the That's garment right. factory. And, you know, that, that raid is, has been um, fresh in my mind as we've got Donald Trump uh, with his ex- executive orders and threats to the, to the immigrant community. Um, and it's, it's an example of why, particularly now with Donald Trump, we need real leadership in the governor's office and someone who's going to stand up for every single person, including our immigrant community here, um, I don't think we've got that right now. Uh, Governor Baker, actually, one of the first things he did before Donald Trump was order state police to work with federal officials to detain immigrants. And I think, uh, you know, I'm, I've supported the Safe Communities Act, which would, which would ensure that local law enforcement resources are not doing Donald Trump's bidding and working with his federal immigration forces to do things like the raid on the garment factory in New Bedford 10 years ago. Jay, uh, to, you, you brought up Governor Baker. Let's uh, let's give you the opportunity to take a couple shots at him. Um, what uh, what do you think of his role? Well, first of all, what did you think of this pay raise that was done in, for the legislature? And what do you think Governor Baker's real role in in it was? Well, I don't I don't um, criticize Governor Baker for vetoing the legislation. I I, I said I would have vetoed it. Um, I don't I don't think the issue of what the adequate level of pay is for legislators and other elected officials um, is uh, I, I believe it's an issue that's that should be debated and that is legitimate to consider whether the, whether the pay should have been increased what I didn't like about it and why I would have vetoed it was I didn't think there was enough process or vetting um, to ensure that the legislation was well informed and 
that uh, the level of pay uh, that that was in the legislation was the right level. So I, I said I would have vetoed it. Governor Baker vetoed it. I think that was the right decision. But it seems to me that he's following Bill Weld's playbook from 1994 when Bill Weld gave them a, went along with a raise, wink and a nod, uh, to get all the legislators on, on board. And I'm just wondering, do you, do you think that, um, that that's one of his tactics here is he's, he's going to keep the legislators, a lot of the legislators, out of helping the Democrat opponent? Well, I, I don't know on that particular issue. I mean, I think it's clear he's, he's been trying to get along well with the legislature, um, and it's something he touts. You know, when I was in state government working as Secretary of Administration and Finance during the Great Recession, I worked very closely with the legislature and worked uh, collaboratively with them and have very strong relationships with them, um, and we got some stuff done. And I think the difference, I think the question that I would raise for voters and, and what I'm uh, offering is the difference between someone who just gets along with everyone but not much is happening and the difference who works co- uh, between a leader who's working collaboratively with the legislature and getting real things done that are going to make a difference in people's lives. And that's what I'm offering. And that's the type of governor I think we need. Uh, we're speaking with Jay Gonzalez, who's a Democrat running for, for governor, uh, the only candidate really in the race right now. Um, what, what was your relationship like with the legislature when you were, were, you, when you were handling the budget for governor, Patrick? Uh, it was very, uh, it was very good. I, I worked collaboratively with uh, legislative leaders and a lot of rank and file legislators on a on a wide variety of issues. Um, I'm very proud of uh, the progress we made un- under Governor Patrick's uh, tenure. Um, and you know that's the way government's supposed to work. The governor, President President Trump. Is, uh, is is trying to change the way g- government works at the federal level, and uh, I think hopes that he's going to be able to just dictate everything that happens at the federal government. I think he's going to find that's not the case when, as he starts to engage more with Congress. But that's the way it works here, too. And, and uh, a governor has to work collaboratively with the legislative branch. Uh, you've got to work in partnership. And again, it's it's a question about whether you're just getting along or whether uh, the governor's providing the real leadership the state needs to work with the legislature and encourage the legislature to um, pass laws that are going to make a meaningful difference for people. And that's what I don't, I'm, I've been frustrated with how little we've accomplished on Governor Baker's watch, but I've honestly been more frustrated with how little we've even tried to accomplish. People are facing big challenges. They can't afford college. They can't afford housing. They can't afford child care. Uh, our health care system is broken. Um, we, need, we need leadership to help, help us and help the legislature, work with the legislature to determine where we need to go, set that vision, and then actually execute and, and get us there. Um, people have been struggling for too long, and uh, we, we need to make some progress. Uh, Jay, you... Um one of the things I think that Republicans, how they get elected in the state of Massachusetts, is that they basically uh, stay away from the social issues or, or be liberal on social issues and promise conservative on fiscal issues by saying, look, I can stand up, I can say no. Uh, are you the kind of guy, you've, you've done the budget for a number of years, are you the kind of guy that can say no to some things if the state simply can't afford it or it's not the right priority? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we, during the Great Recession, when I was in charge of the state budget, um, it was the worst crisis the state had faced in decades because tax revenues um, plunged. And uh, we had to make a lot of very tough decisions to manage the budget. But we did so responsibly. We lived within our means. And uh, meanwhile, we managed to preserve record levels of investment in public education and in our transportation system and other public infrastructure. So. We, we continued to find ways while being responsible to invest in that. When I was there, we got the highest bond ratings in state history. That's a, that's a reflection from the gold standard outside arbiter of this stuff that we were managing responsibly, the highest ever in state history. And those bond ratings are now at risk with Governor Baker a, as our governor. He, you know, this was um, his claimed uh, core competency, that he was going to come in and fix the budget. Well, under Governor Baker, we've been living in much different times than when I was there. Uh, The economy's been booming, and he's continuing to cut funding for programs that people depend on, and he's put our bond ratings at risk. So 
I think when it comes to managing responsibly, I'll put my record up against his any time. Um, but uh, the difference between us is I don't, I don't think managing well is enough. I think we've got to man- we definitely need to manage state government responsibly, and the taxpayers deserve that from their leader. But it's more important that we have a leader who's also um, trying to take us to where we need to go, and, uh, and, and that's what I want to offer. I'm Chris McCarthy. You're listening to Sunday Brunch here on WBSM. Uh, With us is Jay Gonzalez, who's running for the governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as a Democrat. Down here in the greater New Bedford area, uh, one of the big issues, and it's been that way for maybe two decades now, is commuter rail, extending the commuter rail line down to to New Bedford. And quite frankly, people are are almost sick of hearing about it, I think, now, because it's just there's been very little progress on it, true progress. What are your thoughts on that? Is that something you can commit to? Uh, I do commit to it. It's something that I, I believe as a matter of regional equity and to support economic growth in the region, we should do it. Uh, I believe that when I worked for Governor Patrick, um, I was a part of the effort under Governor Patrick to get that project going uh, in terms of uh, ensuring that we had the financial resources committed to it. Um, and as, as you and, and folks in the region know, uh, we made the most progress under Governor Patrick in getting that going um, than any other governor. I'm, I'm concerned about uh, where it stands right now. Um, it's something uh, I think is important to the region, and it's an example of the type of investment that we need to be making. You know, we can't just be looking at, uh, there's a lot more we need to do to fix the system we have, but uh, we need to be aiming much higher than that. This is the example of a forward-thinking investment that we can make that's going to make a significant difference for a really important region of our state and for people who live there. Uh, so I've always supported the project, and I would support it as governor and, and work to get it uh, going as aggressively and as quickly as possible. Well, I, I appreciate your, your candor there, uh, Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, one of the other issues here in the state of Massachusetts, on the federal as well, is uh, Ma- Marijuana. It's, it's been medically, yeah. it's for medical use here in Massachusetts, and it was legalized at the ballot last year. What's your position on legalized recreational marijuana and medical marijuana, and what do you see as the difference? Well, uh, my position on both is that the voters voted for both, and, and I respect the will of the voters. And so I think, you know, uh, uh, with respect to legalized recreational uh, marijuana use, um, now the real question is uh, how do we implement this? And, um, and from my perspective, the most important thing is that we do it thoughtfully and that we do it right and that we keep public safety considerations at the, at the forefront. And so um, we, we, need to, we need to make this happen. The voters want it to happen. Um, but uh, I think from my perspective, the important thing is making sure it happens right. Hey, great. Um, Jay, I appreciate your honesty on that. Jay, we've been speaking with Jay Gonzalez. We're going to let you go, but I want you to give out your website uh, one more time for people at home who are interested in following what you're up to. Great. It's uh, www.j4ma.com, and it's J-A-Y number four M-A. And Chris, I really appreciate your having me this morning and the opportunity to to talk with uh, folks in New Bedford, and I look forward to getting out uh, and meeting as many of you as possible in person. Hey, that's great, Jay. I uh, really appreciate you joining us here and g- giving us some time this morning. Uh, good luck w- with everything that you're doing, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. This is Chris McCarthy for Sunday Brunch. We're going to go to our sponsors, and we'll be back.